Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on mitigating risks in alternative environments. Today we're going to begin by talking about alternative environments, and then we will conclude with a brief discussion on risk mitigation techniques. We have a fair amount of information to go over, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin by discussing alternative environments. As more devices arrive in the workplace with processors built into them, security experts are facing more challenges in securing them. These devices are often considered to be a static environment because the processing power and hardware that the devices comes with cannot be modified or changed. In some cases, exploits have been specifically created to take advantage of the difficulty in securing these environments. Through some careful planning and implementation, some techniques can be utilized to mitigate the risks represented in static environments. The first individual environment that we're going to talk about is the SCADA environment, or the Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition Systems. They are a type of industrial control system that is designed to control large-scale deployments of equipment. The controlled equipment is usually at more than one site. SCADA is often deployed in the energy industry, both on the creation side, so the energy creation side, and on the distribution side, so at your local utility. SCADA tends to have a lack of security on the monitors and controllers that are used to manage the system. Physical security controls should be used to limit access to SCADA components. That is about the best defense for SCADA. Then there are embedded systems. Embedded systems are a self-contained computing system that can be found within a larger system as in printers, HVAC systems, smart televisions, or even automatic teller machines or ATMs. Often these basic embedded systems lack basic security features or implement weak security. The devices also tend to utilize a very basic version of well-known operating systems. Therefore, you can perform security hardening techniques on those operating systems to help secure these devices. Smartphones represent an alternative environment. Mobile phones are increasingly becoming an important tool in the modern workplace. Due to their increasing capabilities, they are also becoming a greater security risk. Because of their portability, smartphones are subject to loss and theft. Security should be focused on restricting access to data on the phone, and whenever possible, full device encryption should be used. Most modern game consoles can be connected to networks. In many cases, the consoles must be connected to the network in order to take advantage of gaming features. Security features for gaming consoles have been increasing lately, so therefore the best mitigation technique is to ensure that all updates are in place for any gaming console that is placed on a network. Mainframes are high-cost, powerful computing systems that contain significant processing power. Due to their cost, mainframes are not replaced very frequently and may be using an older version of operating systems which may have well-known vulnerabilities. Technological controls should be in place to help secure mainframes. Firewalls, access control lists, and door locks can all be implemented to restrict access to the mainframe environment. And finally, we have in-vehicle computing systems. Car manufacturers have been using processors in vehicles for many years. Initially, the processors had limited capabilities and could prove difficult to exploit without physical access to the vehicle. Modern vehicles are coming with more connected systems that may represent a challenge to security. As a matter of fact, in July 2015, a security team demonstrated the ability to take over a vehicle's systems remotely, including the ability to take control of the braking system and the ability to accelerate. 
and they did this from approximately 10 miles away. At this point in time, I am unaware of any mitigation technique for this risk. And with that, let's move on to a brief discussion of some risk mitigation techniques. First up is segmentation. Segmentation is a network design element in which the resources are separated, and they can be separated by function and security requirement, into their own networks. This can be used to control communication and security within the network. Another risk mitigation technique is security layers. Placing security at different places and levels within a network will increase the security of the network as a whole. If one layer of security is breached, attackers will find another layer waiting to frustrate them, like the layers of an onion. Hopefully it makes that hacker cry at each layer that they get to. Application firewalls may also be used. Application firewalls can be used to filter traffic based on what applications are allowed to operate on the network and which applications are not allowed to operate on the network. Updates are another risk mitigation technique. Patches and systems updates should be used to help keep computing environments secure. A best practice is to use a manual updating process so that proper testing of the updates can be done before they're placed into a production environment. Firmware version control should also be implemented. Updates to firmware should be done if it will lead to an increase in security or in vital functionality. And then we have wrappers. These are also known as TCP wrappers. It's a host-based access control list or host-based ACL that can be used in conjunction with a firewall to increase the effectiveness of security. Wrappers can be found in Linux and Unix environments and can be used to specify how an individual host can access a specific service. As in, you can use TCP wrappers to allow Bob access to secure copy protocol but not to file transfer protocol on the file server. When implementing a layered security mitigation technique, it is important to use a variety of products. If all of the firewalls used in the layered approach are the same product, then they will more than likely all have the same vulnerability. Once an attacker breaches one firewall, the rest will likely fall in short order. A best practice is to implement a diversity of products for security considerations, as in using different firewall devices at the different layers. If different products are used, then the hacker has to figure out how to get past each individual product, and the attacker cannot rely on the same vulnerability being present in each device. Now that concludes this session on mitigating risks in alternative environments. We began by talking about those alternative environments and then we concluded with a brief discussion on some risk mitigation techniques. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope you watch another one soon.